Trembling, you fire the heavy arquebus. You hear its loud report over the roaring wind, yet the dark figure still approaches. The gun falls from your nerveless hands. You won't kill me, he says, stepping over the weapon. Not when I am the only protection you have from Jean Lafond. Chestnut hair, tousled by the wind, frames the tanned oval of his face. Lips curving, his eyes rake over your inadequately dressed body. The damp chem chemise clinging to your legs and heavy bosom. Your gleaming hair. You are intensely aware of the strength of his hard sea-worn body, of the deep sea blue of his eyes, and then his mouth is on yours, lips parted, demanding, and you arch into his kiss. He presses you against him, head bent. But who, my dear, he whispers in your hair, whispers in your hair, will protect you from me. Oh, trust me. Plundered Hearts. Late one spring night in the West Indies. A crash overhead, pirates are boarding the La Fondue. The first mate hurries you into the Captain Davis's cabin. Good, you brought the girl, Davis smirks. She'll keep the pirates busy. She was only a tool of Lafon's anyway. Let me just find that cough. A man on deck screams in agony, and Davis starts. Let's go. The captain thrusts you on, on the bed and walks out, locking the door. His laugh echoes. Best get comfortable, girl. You're likely to be there for the rest of your life. Cabin on the bed. You are in, you are in an officer's cabin, lit by the firelight glowing through up porthole. Sorry, guys. A door is to starboard. Except for the built-in bed, the room seems to have been emptied thoroughly, if hurriedly. Okay. Well, we're in bed. Let's stand up. You get out of the bed. You recognize a voice from far away. Don't take that. Look in the cabin at the stern. You'll find some fun there. It sounds like Davis. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, well. Inventory. You have your reticule dangling, hanging from your wrist. It seems that your reticule contains smelling salts and a banknote. You are wearing your kid slippers, a linen chemise, and a cotton frock. Okay. Um, wait. I echoes a scream, followed by several grunts and thumps. Actually, I'm going to imagine that is the Wilhelm scream. Followed by several grunts and thumps. Suddenly, the ship lurches to one side, throwing you off balance. A coffer slides from under the bed and bumps against your foot. Ah, the coffer. All right. Take coffer. Taken. Captain Jameson, we've got him, cries a rough voice. Uh, all right. Should I open the coffer? It's quite locked. With a creak and a crash somewhere, a mast falls to the deck. Oh, shit. Shit's getting real. Uh, let's see. Um, wait again. Time passes. The falcon, the falcon conquers, yells someone. Crash, you whirl around to see the door shatter, kicked in by a hulking man, his twisted visage blackened with soot and blood. My name's Andy Crully, and ladies learn to love me, snickers the pirate. Ew. Hit Crully with coffer. With all your strength, you whack the pirate over the head with the coffer. The pirate stumbles, dizzy. Avast me, but ain't ye a beauty, slurs the pirate. His breath is heavy with rum. Aye, echoes a scream, followed by several grunts and thumps. Shiver me nipples, Captain. Um, I guess let's do what this guide says and hit him again. Hit Crowley with coffer again. With all your strength, you whack the pirate over the head with the coffer. Stunned, Crowley collapses at your feet, his eyes rolling. The door creaks slightly as a tall form bends through its smashed remains. You seem to have the situation well in hand, timbers a well-bred voice. You catch a glimpse of the hard masculinity of his broad shoulders, the implied power in the scar that etches the stranger's jaw, and feel the tremors course through your veins. Then you realize how ragged are his shirt, patched breeches, and high boots. Intuitively, you understand he is the dread falcon, scourge of the sea. Alas, your fate is sealed. Resigned, you meet his sea blue eyes. Oh. Um. Okay, what am I supposed to do? Um. Falcon. Hello. Hello! You say hello, Jerry. To your surprise, the stranger bows. Well met, my lady. His accent is cultured, his smile vibrant. I am Captain Nicholas Jameson, known in these waters as the Falcon. Your father has sent me. He chuckles at your glare of distrust. Yes, you are like your sire. You needn't believe me untried. I carry this. He hands you a missive. 
With a creak and a crash somewhere, a mast falls to the deck. How many masts does this ship have? Read missive. Oh, Jesus. Hunker down, everybody. Dearest child, you are in gravest danger. Lafond is a viper with the smile of a saint, my most particular enemy. I have only now learned the depth of his deception. Should Lafond get you in his power, it is unspeakable. I have sided with Nicholas Jameson, a, s a sea captain and a gentleman, whose circumstances have driven him to extreme measures, even branding him a pirate. Nevertheless, I trust him, and so may you. You will be safe, but there is another for whom I fear. My horse is waiting, and I ride to her rescue. Jameson will deliver this to you. Should anything happen to me, you must rely on him. I remain with love, your father. Uh, the pirate captain glances around the empty room, then notices the coffer in your arms. Davis's safety box. My men were hoping I'd find it. He takes it and nudges the unconscious man on the floor. I wonder how Crowley knew you were here. Just his bad luck? He'll be flogged when he wakes. The pirate bows. My lady... May I offer my protection on my ship until your father is free? Yes. You nod tentatively. He chuckles. Brave lady to trust a stranger and a pirate. Who knows, perhaps I forged your father's signature. Keep by my side as we go to my ship. Few sailors respect a lady's dignity. He helps you through the door. Deck. The deck is an avalanche of noise and blood. That's a good line. Lit by roaring fires, silhouetted forms, crash swords dancing around the screaming wounded. <laughs> Out of the smoke staggers Davis, tugging a bloodied knife from the back of a pirate. Davis's eyes gleam white from a face black and then bloody, his lips dark red as, he, as if he's been drinking blood. He turns to face you. Okay, so let's see, what do I do? Let's scream. Although your voice is quite piercing, no one notices you. Aw. Davis leaps across the deck at your side. Free me or she dies, he yells, jabbing a knife up to your throat. In one smooth motion, Captain Jameson draws his rapier, pulls you free, and stabs Davis. And stabs. Davis slumps into a bloody heap. Swooning, you fall into the Falcon's arms. You are dimly aware of being carried to the other ship, down a short flight of stairs, and laid gently on a soft bed. When you gather strength to look around, the Falcon has left you in peace. You remain confined to this room, a large cupboard blocking the door. Meals are brought to brought by a peg-legged old man and eaten in silence. Of your handsome rescuer, you see nothing. Slowly, the days pass. Do, do, do. Two days, to be exact. You blear awake from a board nap, focusing on something shiny. What are you, a raccoon? You discern it to be a new ring on a strong hand in the act of tying a ribbon onto a rapier. The man with the rapier and the ring turns. Sorry, I tried not to wake you. You sit up as if the bed had caught fire. For this is the falcon, changed from his rags to a finery, all red velvet and white lace, and in your presence, captain's quarters on the bed. You are in the captain's quarters of the Helena Louise, where you have been trapped these past days since your rescue from the Lafond Dew. The room has a masculine air, with ebony paneling, a large messy table, and a rumpled bed upon which you lie. A curtain masks the forward exit, and gilded woodwork decorates the sill of the tall window looking aft. Okay. What's up with that ring? Examine ring. Made of copper, the new ring is a curious design of gargoyles, curled tongues extended on its flat face with sal sepit omnia engraved at the bottom. Oh, salt savers all, eh, Jameson? I wonder what that's all about. Give me that ring. Captain Jameson curls his fist around it. This is a copy of the family ring lost with my brother. Oh, okay. We have anchored off St. Sinistra, says Captain Jameson, and I must look like a guest at Lafond's dance tonight. I will find it for your father, and then finally wreak my revenge on Lafond. He half draws his rapier from its scabbard. Um, all right. Let's see. I guess I'll stand up. You get out of the bed. I'm sorry you have been confined down here, but I don't trust my lonely crew with such beauty. Crowley isn't the only man aboard with few principles. He smiles at you, eyes lingering, and takes your hand. You feel your color rising. If anything goes wrong, turn to Cookie. He is quite deaf but capable. He'll see you through. Well, it doesn't sound like he's capable of hearing anything, but it's okay. Um, all right. He'll see you through. Okay. Go, let's see. Let's try going north. A sinewy arm encircles you. Stay, my lady. 
His look darkens. You should know why I hate Lafon. Some years ago, as my brother and, and his bride sailed to a new life in Virginia, pirates struck. Their ship was boarded, looted, and burned. The women taken, never to be seen again. A sailor, the one survivor, watched as a man of Lafon's description shot my brother in the back as he tried to save the women. Lafon now brought Lafon has now bought respectability, but he shall never buy peace. Jameson straightens resolutely, bows, and departs. Ooh, wow, he's so mysterious. Now we'll go north. The large cupboard is not flush against the door sill. You squeeze through the opening between cupboard and wall. Landing. You are on the landing of a steep stairway, heading up and down. A large cupboard against the aft wall blocks the doorway to the captain's quarters. Okay. Open cupboard. Opened. It is a dark, messy bed, set entirely within and filling a large cupboard. A cabin boy must sleep here when Jameson isn't using it. Kicked into a far corner is a pile of clothes. Um, alright. Get in cupboard. Sleeping cupboard. The bed is softer than it looks, plumped up with fresh straw, a soft if somewhat cramped bunk for the tall bulk of Jameson. The cupboard opens to the fore. Kicked into a far corner is a pile of clothes. Take clothes. You pick up the pile of clothes. It separates into a pair of breeches and a shirt. Okay, well. Remove frock. You take off the cotton frock. Now this guide I'm reading tells me to tear it for some reason. So we'll do that. Tear frock. You rip a large rag out of the cotton frock. Yeah, I'm sure that won't be used later. Um, wear breeches and a shirt. You now tuck the linen chemise into the pants. You look a little fat, but now you can move freely and wear a shirt. It fits loosely, masking your figure. Oh, good. All right. Exit to the landing. Verbose. I want full descriptions all the time. All right. Um. Let's see what see what happens. You hear the door being unbarred and Captain Jameson's startled laugh. For a moment I thought you were Matthew, the boy who used to sleep in the cupboard. He ran off last port. How did you escape? Don't stutter, I won't lock you up again. You are safe as long as you remain below decks. I came down to give you this, my allotment from the coffer. He nods at the box in his arms. Jameson starts to pin a jeweled brooch on your clothes, but Devil, take it. The clasp is broken. I'll have it repaired. He folds the pretty thing into your hand. And I meant to reassure you that if the men suddenly abandon ship, they're off to help me. Rodney will stay behind with you. He hands the coffer to you. Please return this to my quarters for me, will you? And walk swiftly up the stairs to the deck, barring the door for a moment later. Huh. Let's see. Down. Aft hold. This is a gloomy, damp area at the bottom of the Helena Luis. To the fore, there seems to be a little more light, or you can climb up some steep stairs. Um, let's see. North. You hear a scuffling noise ahead and scraping up near the ceiling. You would think it was caused by rats, but for the definite curse you heard before all the movement. Okay. Hold. Steep stairs lead up into the dimness to a canvas hatch above. Rat scratches counterpoint the lullaby of bilge water sloshing in the bulkheads, punctuated by footsteps slapping in the over deck overhead. You may move fore or aft. Behind a high fence, decorated by a sign, are stacked the food and ammunition supplies, casks of rum, water, flour, and salt meat, interspersed with kegs of gunpowder and shot. The closed gate is the only way in. Hang on. Alright. North again. Cruise quarters. The crew sleeps in shifts in this cramped space under the forecastle. A breeze blows in on a moonbeam through the grate in the ceiling. A low door sill is abaft. Abaft. This area must also serve as sick room. Strewn about the floor are various powders and spills of, malodori of malodorous <laughs> potions. In one corner, a large blood stain indicates an amputation. In another is the smear of a leech, dropped off by bloodletting. A small bottle has been dropped nearby. 
A chipped piece of mirror sits props on a shoulder high timber. All right. Open coffer. Opening the coffer reveals an invitation. I gotta let Lafon know he's coming. Crowley stands on deck above, talking to himself, his voice floating down through a grate in the ceiling. First I do in the mates aboard ship with this, and t'other mischief, he grunts, and you hear a snapping noise, like a taut rope being cut. Now to warn the boss and collect me pay, off I go, har, he dives into the sea. Well, that's convenient that Crowley really enjoyed, like, speaking out loud, long monologues that explains things on what he's doing. All right, take invitation. Let's read it. The invitation is addressed to Davis, in honor of Jean Lafon, recently proclaimed governor of St. Sinistra, a dance at his mansion, Aranas Road, St. Sinistra. Formal dress and invitation required. A ball. You haven't been to a ball in months. Well, I'm not going to a ball now because I haven't been invited. God, how presumptuous is this game? All right. Hang on one second. Doesn't tell me to take the mirror that I see there. Can I take the mirror? Yeah, huh? The guy doesn't tell me to do that. Take bottle. All right. Up. A grape blocks your way. I must be doing something wrong. Hang on one second. Oh, south twice. Actual open the company. Go up and south to the captain's quarters. Up to the landing. South back to the captain's quarters. Okay. I'm gonna take a quick hit off my vape, so hang on. Alright, I'm back. Okay. Break window with coffer. This has been one hell of a useful coffer. You hurl the coffer through the window, sending it and a shower of glass into the sea, killing a family of porpoises. The ledge now looks deep enough to sit upon. The reefs seem a little larger than you thought before. Uh-oh. That's not good. Oh, that's right. Crawley cut the line. All right. Let's see. Break the window south onto the ledge. You climb onto the ledge. The ladder drifts within reach. All right. Get ladder. You put everything in your reticule and reach out for the ladder and overbalance, tumbling from your perch. Your hand closes on a slimy hemp rung as you fly out over the waves, clinging tenuously, feet free of to the ladder. On the ladder, you are clinging to a slimy ladder tied to a rail of the poop deck above you. Not far from your feet, waves kiss the stern of the ship. Ooh, this is exciting. All right, let's see. up. You climb the ladder. All air is driven out of you as the ladder slams you into the stern. Up. You climb the ladder, passing the halfway point. Rebounding the ladder, rebounding, the ladder twists you around to face the Halloween of Luis. Um, up. You climb the ladder. The ladder swings back towards the Halloween of Luis. Uh, that's one, two, three, four. Up. You heave yourself over the stern rail and sink breathless to the deck of the Halloween of Luis. Poop! From this platform deck, you can see the whole of the two-masted ship, shadowy forms moving about here and there. A railing protects you from stepping off the deck in any direction but to the fore. A rope ladder is tied to the railing at the stern of the ship. The reefs seem a little larger than you thought before. Okay... Quarter deck. I headed north there. Quarter deck. No torches are lit or needed on this moonlit night except in the deep shadows cast by the huge navigation wheel. Men move about to the fore, talking quietly under the stairs. Aft to the poop is a barred door. The reefs seem a little larger than you thought before. Abaft the wheel sits a large pyramid of casks held in place by a heavy rope. Cannon line the deck, aimed at open sea and the island. Okay... Examine barrels. Oh wait, north one more to the main deck. That's where the barrels are. 
main deck. It is a deceptively quiet evening on the ship. The pirates singing low shanties as they repair cannons, twist ropes, and sharpen daggers. The main mast casts an inky shadow over the canvas, screening the hatch. A tangled mass of rigging hangs down from the mast like, like many rope ladders woven together. The reefs seem a little larger than you thought before. Two large barrels stand near the stair to the foredeck. Examine barrels. The two open barrels contain rum and water. You can tell by the smell of each. They are identical, but for the dark stains around the mouth of the rum barrel. All right. Um, let's see. Dip rag in water. Keeping hold of the rag, you soak it with water. Your eyes are drawn to a flicker of light off the sea. Squinting, you see a man swimming to shore. Moonlight flashing off his hook. Hook. A wisp of breeze brings an odor of onion and rum and the occasional gargling chuckle. Mischief. Har. Reefs. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> that is so ham-fisted. You gotta love it. That, first of all, he's still swimming and that's as far as he's got that I can still hear him. But he hit the water a, w a while back there from what I remember. All right. Um, dip in the rag. Open the hatch. You pull a corner of canvas out of the frame. Steep stairs descend into murky darkness. Down. You glance around to see that no one is watching and duck through the open corner of the canvas hatch. Hold. Moonlight shines down from the stairs through an open corner of the canvas hatch above. Rats scratchings counterpoint to the lullaby bilge of sloshing bowl. Okay, so I read that part before. Uh, oh, here we go. Here's the part, though, that's important. A tiny glow of fire creeps across a stretch of floor inside the cage full of ammunition. Ah. Fire aiming for the ammunition cage. Not good. Let's see. Throw rag at fire. You throw the rag over the grate. Luckily, it lands directly on the burning end of the fuse. With a sputter and a sigh, the flame dies. Yay! Achievement unlocked. All right. Up. North. Forecastle. Higher than all but the poop deck, this end of the ship commands a good view of the island. The crow's nest swinging above in the heights of the foremast would command a better... A tangled mass of rigging hangs down from the mast, like many rope ladders woven together. Embedded in the deck is a grated air hole, hey, I haven't called worse, to the crew's quarters below. You can go aft or forward through a break in the ubiquitous railing. Odors of old grease and char waft from a little shack perched behind the mast. The reefs seem a little larger than you thought before. You can see mooring winch here. All right, let's see. Examine winch. Made of an old barrel turning on a pole, the mooring winch is used to coil in the anchor chain. A pair of metal teeth bite the links to prevent it from dragging out. A lever is connected to the teeth. Something is written on the lever. The reefs are definitely getting larger. Uh, let's see. Raise lever. The metal teeth open as you raise the lever. The anchor release splashes down into the sea, dragging its clanking chain. After a moment, you feel the ship pull slightly against the current. You lower the lever to prevent any more chain from spooling out. All right. And uh, another achievement done there. Uh, let's see. Go in the galley. Enter galley. Galley. This tiny kitchen smells of old stew and yeast. A low door to the starboard shows the way out. A dagger is driven into the wooden floorboards. An entirely bald man sits here, carving into his peg leg. The old man looks at you over sharply and then winks an eye. Hello, boy. Sam, I'll call you. Nervous about Cap'n? He'll come to no harm. And if there is trouble, he only has to signal from that seaward window of the house. You can see it from the crow's nest, and we'll be there in a jiffy. Me and my peg leg are to stay aboard and guard you, the captain's, the captain's young lady. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Take dagger. Taken. With a heave and a creak of timbers, the Helena Louise drifts a little way back towards the island. The tide has turned. All right. Um, go out and 
Exit South, Exit Galley, South, back to the main deck. Twice to the quarter deck. Examine casks. Didn't I already do that? Examine casks. Lying on their sides. No, it's a different thing. The casks are stacked in a rather shaky pyramid. Perhaps that's why someone has tied the rope around them. A cask on one corner has lost its lid. Hey, boy, get away from those. It ain't safe, yells a sailor. Uh, let's see. Sit in cask. You crawl into the cask, feeling a slab of something stuck at the bottom. Ew. From this close, you can see the lines getting frayed where it rubs against the cask. All right. Cut line with dagger. The line snaps and the pyramid collapses into dozens of tumbling casks. Your cask is thrust into the sea and the dagger flying from your hand. Sputtering mouthfuls of salt water, you first look around several minutes later. Lagoon in the cask. You are crouched in the cask of the lagoon of St. Sinistra. The jungle looms gray-green in the light of the full moon. It seems that the cask contains a slab of pork. Take pork. Um, all right. You peel the pork off the cask. The current pulls you in towards the island. All right. And uh, that's a good place to stop for now. And uh, maybe I'll get to a part two. We will have to see. Thanks for joining. Bye.